Hello and welcome to From Kentucky to Tokyo. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, yeah, so this is the new year of 2017 and I'm gonna make a New Year's resolution. Yay. I'm gonna start uploading more often like I should have been the past couple months, but I just, I've had issues with internet and I've had issues with uh, trying to upload via other means and it hasn't really worked out. So this year, my New Year's resolution is no matter what, I'm going to try and upload once a week, even if it's just 10 minute short videos or something, I would like to upload more. And yeah, so it is the year 2017. Yay. But in Japan, actually, it's the year, uh, it's the year 29 because it's the emperor's years that it goes by. So I have to remember that it's now the year 29 and not 28 along with it's no longer 2016 it's 2017 i have two different dates i have to remember and i i pray <laughs> that i can remember those dates and not put the wrong dates on all my important documents i will have to sign <laughs> because i'm going to renew you my contract for school and so i've got to be able to do that yeah so fun fact in japan it's now the year 29 oh also this year is the year of not kidding it's the year of the black uh rooster. I was going to say cock, but yeah. But yeah, it's the year of the black rooster. So why black? Because the year cycles also go by yin and yang, not just by zodiac animals. So if you didn't know, every year of zodiac, there are certain animals that are attributed to them. This year, it's going to be the year of the rooster and it's with the, uh, uh, the black, not the white. So when this cycle is over, this 12 year cycle, it'll go back to white, but for now it's black. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. So if you are born in the year of the, specifically, if you're born in the year of the black rooster, you're going to have a very good year or it should be your year, but technically that doesn't technically start until, um, I believe March or April. That's when the uh, Chinese new year, uh, goes into effect. That's when the actual new year for the Eastern Asian culture start. But, eh, I don't know. In Japan, they're kind of like, eh, it's good enough. It's, like, close enough. It's the year of the rooster now. So, that's what people are saying. It's the year of the rooster. Yay! So, all of the, like, um, all of the postcards and all the New Year's cards are with roosters, which is really cute. Actually, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get one. Okay. I bumped this, so I apologize. Okay. So... <laughs> this. So these like rooster things that are part of the New Year's. So this is a New Year's card. I sent out, I think only four of these this year. Uh, but usually, so for New Year's cards, these are like super important in Japan. I could have, uh, I should have done this before, but yeah, you're supposed to send these out in December. This year, the cutoff date was, I believe Christmas day. I believe it was like December 25th or 26th. You send these to the post office with like your sender's address here, your address here, and your name, their name, in Japanese if you can, but you can do romaji is okay, so like the English characters is okay, but you have to put their zip code here and your zip code here. That's the most important thing because in Japan, zip codes are by building or by block. They're not by a uh, like regional area, so you can find a building based on the zip code, so always put a zip code on there. It's very important. So anyway, um, I sent out like four of these. I sent one out to my vice principal. I sent one out to uh, a few other teachers who sent me one. Uh, but yeah, so these are neat because on the back here, so see this number? So this number here, you can actually go to the post office by this year. It's by, ah, it's by the 15th. And if you have this number and it matches to the number at the post office, you have to go to the post office, look at this number, look at the number there, and you might win money, which is super fun. It's like a lottery system. And so, yeah, people send these out every year to try and match it so that they can get, like, some amount of money. I don't know if it's, like, a super big number or if it's just, like, pretty big number. I don't know if it's, like, 100,000 yen or a million yen or 100 million yen. I'm not really sure. But still pretty cool. So, um, this, uh, number and this number too, they're, they're two different kinds. I forget what the other numbers for. 
think there's like small prizes and such, but I can't quite recall. So yeah, so that's the first drawing is by the 15th. But then if there are no other numbers that come in, they'll do another redrawing. And uh, those are in January 7th. January 16th to Shichigatsu Juhachi. So by July 18th. I don't know why I had to go Japanese and then return back to English in order to understand that, but I did. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so these are great and I have to remember to go to the post office with mine and go check if I have money waiting for me because <laughs> I totally forgot. So that's one thing that's like a customary traditional thing to do is to send these out. Also, in Japan, there are these omikuji things. I ripped mine. Oh, no. So in Japan, you can go to a shrine and you can get, first of all, it's called a Hatsu, Hatsu Hinode. Hatsu no it's where you go for the first uh, sunrise of the year. Sunrise. I went the first night. It wasn't quite sunrise yet. It was like three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. We kept waiting for the sunrise to happen, but it came later than we thought it would at like six o'clock. Anyway, so there we, uh, you purify your hands, you go to the shrine, clap once, pray, bow, or clap twice, clap twice, pray, bow, clap once, and then leave. And uh, give money to the shrine. Then you go get these, omikuji. These are about, this one was only hyakuin. Ah, I ripped it, I'm sorry. But yeah, omikuji, which is like a fortune that you can get at a shrine which will tell you how your year is going to go uh and so mine was like meh it's gonna be okay it's not gonna be like the greatest thing in the world but it'll be fine and i was cool with that so they look like this they're really long and they've got all these characters on them <laughs> that i have to translate but basically mine says that it'll be okay uh you might have some health issues but i was like i always have health issues so meh but uh they're saying that like Everything will be okay, so long as I don't get distracted, which is a problem for me. But yeah, that's another thing that you can do here. These, if you don't like them though, if you want to get another one, you can. You take this and you fold it up into threes, you tie it, and then you put it around either a tree or you put it at the shrine. You can read it, go, oh, I don't like this wrap it wrap it around the shrine either the staircase or there's usually outer fences or perimeters that you can go to to tie these up and then the shrine people will take all those down and they'll burn them for you or you can burn it at home it's essential though for like if you're really superstitious and you want to get a new one you got to make sure the shrine has it or you burn it otherwise it doesn't work when you like get your new one i'm not that superstitious though but i I got a couple of ones that I just did like, eh, well, I don't know. My family is superstitious and it kind of rubs off on me. So I got to burn a couple of my old ones. So this new one can come into effect. But anyway, so yeah, that's some fun new year stuff that you can do. Uh, there's also, <laughs> there's a bunch of other crazier things you could do. Like uh, my friends, when I lived in uh, Ibaragi, they'd go to a shrine and they go, it's called Kashima Jingu, so Kashima Shrine. And people would go and they wait in line on purpose to like strip down to underwear and then go into this pool, this like fortune pool that gives them health and longevity. This pool is outside. This pool has a waterfall that's raining water down on you and you're supposed to stand there like this and it's freezing. <laughs> And you're supposed to stand there and get health and longevity like pouring over you. I don't know how long you have to stand there, but that people would just stand there forever. And no, <laughs> I'm sorry, not gonna do it. But it was, it is something that people do and people enjoy for some strange reason. I don't know. I say strange. I don't know. I personally always miss my American tradition of like eating uh, I don't know why, but eating like black eyed beans, like with my, like, you know, with my family, I don't know if they're called black eyed peas or beans or whatever, but for good luck, you're supposed to eat those here. You're supposed to eat soba or you're supposed to eat mochi or osechi, which is like a, a box, a bento box full of like random little bits of Japanese food. It's quite delicious. Um, 
but yeah, those are the things you're supposed to eat here. Soba is pretty easy for me to get. So I ran and I got soba the night of, and I ate it from a convenience store, which is fine. That's, you'll usually see at convenience stores, there'll be huge, just things of soba just sitting around for that exact purpose. And also mochi. Uh, mochi though has gotten like, uh, kind of a bad reputation nowadays. It's been because there's more older generations, they can't eat the mochi and some people have died. I believe this year is about seven to 12 people approximately died. I'm not sure. The thing is a couple of them, they weren't sure if they died or were just severely choked, injured from it. But yeah, seven to 12 ish people approximately died from eating mochi, choking on it. And then it couldn't come out because mochi's sticky. So even if you do the Heimlich maneuver, it can't come out. So yeah, that's kind of a sad part, but oh well. I had mochi. I didn't die. <laughs> but I always, I'm always careful because I can keep that in mind. I've always got green tea or I've got some other like liquid on me so that I can drink it along with eating it. So yeah, uh, that's something to do whenever you are at New Year's. Be very careful. Drink water or drink something with the mochi that you're eating. And, uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't try to eat it all at once. That's like the main problem people have. They try to like eat the whole thing in one bite. Don't do that. You can bite mochi and rip it. It's better that way. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry. Didn't mean to make this into a PSA, but yeah, other things that you can do at new year's time is, uh, you can go to a family's house. Like usually most people at new year's, they like surge right after Christmas and they run to their hometowns and their home prefectures and you're supposed to go home and like uh have like a small family reunion and eat like uh Mekon like oranges together for health and things and you're supposed to give gifts and I forget what else you're supposed to like uh you're supposed to oh uh, cleanse your house so there's the end of the year cleaning which I actually did I cleaned my entire house this winter vacation so end of the year cleaning, not uh, spring cleaning. Spring cleaning isn't really a thing here. Uh, it's mostly end of the year cleaning. And it actually makes more sense in my head now that I've started making a habit of doing that every year because everybody else is doing it. So I just do it. And it actually makes a lot of sense. There's more time in the winter vacation and it makes it just makes more sense to do it. So uh, everybody cleans their homes. They burn like uh, anything that is religiously related. So if you had a, uh, a shrine devoted to a family member, they burn it. They may make new things. I, I think some people do choose to keep theirs, but if you want to get a new thing, then you burn all the old stuff and you put all the new, like, uh, like new photographs, sometimes uh, new shrine, incense pots, new things like that. Otherwise you have to go to a shrine and get it purified altogether. And yeah, uh, if when you do that, you can sometimes have a priest come to your house and bless it. I don't not heard it, but anybody but rich people do that though. <laughs> I'll be honest. Most middle-class average families don't do that anymore. Uh, there used to be priests who would travel around and bless your home in the new year, but I haven't seen any down here in Kanagawa and Ibaraki. I saw a couple of them bless a home and they would go through and they would make prayers and cleanse a house for a new year. Usually though, uh, I haven't seen that happen in a while. I haven't seen that happen the past couple of years since I've moved to the city, but I guess in the rural areas is a little bit more religious. So that's why, but in the new year, you do sometimes have a priest come purify your house, but you can also do it at your house. Uh, there are certain rituals. I forget how they work exactly, but like there are brooms you can use to like sweep out old spirits and there's, uh, uh, incense and things. So you can cleanse your house, you can clean your house, and uh, you also put at the uh, like mailbox area or like at your front door. It depends on, uh, I forget how it works, there's rules for it, but you can put like a small thing on your door that'll uh, invite good spirits but keep away bad spirits, and it's to protect you and have health and things. Actually, I have one. I'll be right back. So like this, <laughs> it's usually like this kind of comb thing that like this kind of shape. And then there's usually some kind of like meaning and things like that. So 
This one I got though. This one's special and I can't ever burn it. This one I got at Kyoto. I got it at the Inari Shrine from, if you ever seen Memoirs of a Geisha, that big uh, red Tori Gate mountaintop. I got that. I got this from there. So I cannot get rid of this. <laughs> Even though I probably should because it's been a few years, but oh well. Uh, so yeah, if you have an old one, you're supposed to burn it and then put up a new one. And this is the, the new one you put up if you want to. Oh no, it fell. Meh. Oh well. But yeah, these are the things that people will like put in front of their homes or they'll put on their mailbox or usually it's like the entrance way to your house. So if you've got like a fence and then you have a front door area, you put this on there or you put it at your front door. Either or really kind of works, but yeah. So these are the things you also do at New Year's. But, uh, oh, and then some people put offerings to, uh, gods or they put offerings at the shrines or like sake or sometimes money, but usually, uh, food items, mikan, like little, sorry, mikan oranges, <laughs> little tiny, the little small mini oranges. They'll put those at the shrine or they'll put those at a, uh, place of rest. So people will go to family graves and they'll also place, uh, offerings to dead family members at grave sites. Uh, yeah. So things like that. That's all New Year's traditions in Japan. Personally, of course, since I don't have, well, I have Japanese family in the terms of like adopted family members and I have like host family members, but I don't have anybody that I go home for, uh, quite yet. I will go back to Itako sometime soon. I was supposed to go this winter break, but I didn't do that, but I will sometime soon. Yeah, so, yeah, fun New Year's time. So, in Japan. So this wasn't as well prepared as I probably should have had it, but yeah. So that's what New Year's in Japan is like for me. Uh, other people, of course, go to parties. I did go to a party, actually. I went to two, technically. But yeah, I went to uh, New Year's parties. I did a countdown at a club. And then, it was <laughs> really funny. I went to a club. I celebrated the countdown. I, like, was doing my thing for like two hours and then we went to a shrine and did Hatsunobe. <laughs> so, yay. Yeah, that's how my New Year's went. And yeah, that's what basically people do. So if you have any questions about New Year's in Japan, I guess put it down in the description. And I guess my New Year's resolution is also to be more prepared about doing these videos and thinking through all the things I should probably use as props. So, but anyway, have a good 2017, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.